Let's have uh, a chat this morning to Sonia Van Hewitt from Ocean Grove, who was with Friends of the Earth and has been monitoring changes to the coastline for many years. Sonia, good morning. Good morning, Nicole. What was your reaction to the report? Uh, I was saddened, but I wasn't surprised at all. Uh, it's something that uh, locals have known about for many years. Why were you not surprised? Um, when, when you're a, a resident and you see the same place all the time, you see the effect of the climate when it comes and, and affects the coastline. And certainly um, knowing a lot of people that live around the Port Arlington, um, St Leonard's, Queenscliff area, um, they've got horror stories about um, the waves washing over and coming near the roads. Um, certainly there has been in around St Leonard's um, so storm surge and waves have actually washed up and, and inundated some homes um, in the past when the, um, the effects of the climate have actually taken over and, and produced big enough waves to wash over. And that's all an effect of climate change. Really? Homes have been inundated in yes. St Leonard's as a result of rising sea levels? That's right. Uh, along Ramblers Road, it happened a few years ago, um, certainly along Ocean Grove, which is where I live, I can see the cliffs uh, being inundated, undercut and collapsing. And um, that's happening right along the coastline. And because our beaches um, in certain areas are very narrow and because of the low-lying housing and industry that have been put on those areas, they're at real risk of being inundated through storm surge. Um, we've got problems with groundwater, some of our freshwater lakes, um, because of the groundwater rising because of sea level change. Some of those habitats will be changing and becoming brackish and saline and affecting the, um, the biota that actually live in those areas. What do you think about this, Sonia? What, what is your emotional reaction? You have been monitoring changes to the coastline for years. We've been getting warnings about climate change and rising sea levels for years. And you are living the change. What is your emotional reaction when you look about and you see this, this happening? I'm, I'm particularly frustrated. Uh, as a, a campaigner um, for climate, we've been trying to educate the public and also influence the government to take action. And what they do is they do a lot of disaster relief or they do mitigation but they don't actually be proactive about what they're doing. And so um, I, I think I'm frustrated and angry that more isn't being done to protect people and to protect properties and to protect communities. Um, and they're also um, governments are allowing uh, in, you know, large businesses to undertake really, really potentially dangerous things for our climate such as the seismic blasting that's happening or that will be proposed for the Otway Basin. We, you know, those sorts of things will only exacerbate the problems that we've got um, and the government isn't addressing what the actual problems are at this point. Has the seismic blasting been given the green light by the government? Not, well, it's, they've got the permits, um, but not SEMA, which is the National Offshore Petroleum Safety and Environmental Manager Authority, Authority, has the final say on whether it's going ahead. So there have been a lot of community actions and they're continuing. There's actually more action, I think, on Sunday at um, Apollo Bay and then going right through along the coastline um, to campaign and educate the local public about the danger of seismic blasting, not just because of the, um, the increasing gas supply, but also because of the dangers of um, the whale migration routes, um, the phytoplankton and the zooplankton damages from seismic blasting. All of those things are instrumental to making our Earth a, a, a complete, you know, have to have a holistic point of view on things like that. The seismic blasting is for gas exploration, is it? That's correct, that's correct. And does, does not the federal government have the final say on whether or not that goes ahead? We've got a Labor government in place now. Aren't they more climate friendly? They are in some ways, uh, but they're not in others. Uh, there's still very much the thought of a gas-led recovery, which is totally um, against what should be happening. We should be really focusing on um, looking at renewable energy sources, not fossil fuels, because gas is essentially um, methane 
and a fossil and, and, and a fossil gas. Um, and so the government should be, instead of looking at a, a gas lead recovery, they should be looking more at a renewable resources um, energy source for Australia and and, and around the world as well. The, the federal government, though, could shut down that seismic blasting, could shut down that project Absolutely. if they want. Absolutely, if they want to. Um, and that, that's part of the problem, that governments are very, very slow to react and um, that even though there's large community support for renewables, um, it's very difficult for a lot of people to actually um, take up the renewable resources or, or renewable um, energy sources for their homes because it's very expensive start-up. I've, I've gone completely electric at home, but it cost me a lot of money um, to, to actually be, get on solar, remove my gas supply for hot water and everything like that. So yes, governments can do something. They've just got to do it. They've just got to do it. Sanja, uh, what part of this report, uh, when you pull it apart, relates specifically to this region, to Geelong, Surf Coast? What does it say about the threat to this region specifically? There's, there's a number of threats. Um, and the, um, the article didn't put it in a timeline, but it mentioned a whole, key, a whole number of key um, elements that there's um, coastal inundation, increase in storm surge, um, groundwater table effects and things like that. Sea level change and sea level rise is very slow. And by 2100, uh, there will be a, a significant rise in sea levels, but it's not impacting us at the moment. Um, and so we can't see these changes happening because um, we're living in the moment. What we are seeing is an increase in storm surge events, which is where um, the temperature of the water, which is slightly warmer um, every year, is actually creating a, 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 a pressure change in the atmosphere, which increases wind. And these winds are actually creating larger and larger storm surges or waves washing on at high tides. And these storm surges are actually impacting our coastlines. They're undercutting the cliffs and causing cliffs to collapse. They're washing beaches away. Um, and even when there's retaining walls, like at Ocean Grove, the retaining wall is holding back the ocean, but around the edges where the um, retaining wall finishes, it's actually uh, scouring and eroding around the um, edges of this uh, retaining wall. And so um, these are things that are immediate and the sea level rise is very, very incremental. But all of those things have been impacted. And because of the coastline around here and, and even down the Great Ocean Road, we're losing not just our coastlines, but also um, tourist dollars, because if you've got a, an ugly beach, people, people won't want to go. If we have any more cliff collapse um, infrastructure, roads and things like that will disappear, which means tourists won't be able to go there. There'll be a lot of money spent on rehabilitating those areas, but there's no money being spent on making those communities resilient. And one of the things that Friends of the Earth would love to see is a permanent Victorian Community Climate Adaptation Fund, not just piecemeal funding, but a fund that is permanent and that individual communities can actually apply for it and individualise the climate mitigation for that community and for the people that live within that community, rather than having a blanket solution for the whole of Victoria or the whole of Australia. So if we do nothing, Sanja, what will our region look like in 2100? Well, most of our uh, community or coastal residences will have to be um, abandoned and people moved or finding new places to live. Um, I was interested that a lot of the, um, the areas that were mentioned in the report were some of the slightly more affluent areas, but there are areas around Moorlap and Leopold, which are also at risk of inundation. And they are um, more, you know, more working class areas. And so people that live in those communities will find themselves in a lot more difficult circumstances because they won't have um, the ability to change or to move. Um, essentially, our coastlines will disappear. Um, we will have a lot of infrastructure that might be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll look a little bit like Planet of the Apes, I would imagine, wow. in some areas, wow. that you would have concrete buildings that are surrounded by water, um, that a lot of the, um, the 
community gardens and things like that might be dying because of groundwater change and salinity and brackish water happening in those communities. The new estates around um, Armstrong Creek, um, Warralili, all of those areas that are um, part of that um, that infrastructure that's coming in from the floodplains of the Barwon River, um, while they've been built on those floodplains and there has been some infrastructure put in to mitigate that in terms of drainage, there's no guarantee that drainage is going to work, um, especially in, um, in times of really large events, especially if there's been rainfall, if we have a, 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 a tidal surge, um, if we have a king tide. That's happened in Brisbane. We've had multiple examples of um, 1974, 2011, 2022 flooding in Brisbane, um, simply because of a mix of atmospheric and climate-related events, and Brisbane is flooded. There is nothing to say that won't happen along any area of the Barwon Coast. Sanjay, you talk about a, a landscape that looks like the planet of the apes, which is a pretty, pretty sort of horrifying... It is. And it's, it's, it's scenario. It's scenario. Of, yeah. But we've been told... We've been told for decades now that climate change is going to do this. And still, uh, governments, businesses continue to burn fossil fuels and do all of those things that the scientists tell us we should not be doing. And many of our government leaders, I've heard politicians, so I think it was Tony Abbott who said that climate change is crap, um, deny that this is even happening. That's right, that's right. I, I'm a scientist and I've been working in the area of look, uh, monitoring climate changes um, in sediments along coastal areas. It's, it, it is known, but the emergency and the, um, and the immediacy of these changes is being ignored. Um, slowly but surely we do change government's thinking, but in effect, the government um, is, I'm, I'm going to say, when we had uh, COVID come out, we could act immediately. We could find a vaccine. We could, mm -hmm. we could do all these things that um, would keep our community. Well, we locked down, we locked down entire communities. Exactly. We, we took unprecedented action. Yes. Governments can take action. They can. The reasons why they're not taking action, I'm not going to go into. They'll be politically motivated somewhere in there. But they can take action. And when a government actually takes action, then people take notice. But it seems that while we, mm. um, while the scientists are saying that this has been happening, uh, it goes right back to Rachel Carson with Silent Spring and all of the things since the 1950s and 60s. Unless it's recognised by our leaders, nothing will happen. Yeah, the fish rots from their head down, doesn't it? Exactly. And that's why COP, all the COP events have been a lot of talk, but not a lot of action. Uh, great to talk to you. A bit depressing. But we do have the possibility of something happening. <laughs> if we can campaign hard enough, if we can actually, you know, get in touch with our government leaders, our local um, politicians, and really, really start to say, look, you've got to do something, you really do. And that's why these actions along the coastline to stop the seismic blasting are so important, that people turn out uh, on Sunday morning at Apollo Bay to show that we don't want seismic blasting because that's a small part in the climate change um, scenario that people can change through, um, through community. And so that would be fantastic if, um, yeah, just contact your politician and, and don't take no for an answer. Sandra, great to talk to you. Uh, we shall speak again. Thank you.